Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Christian Church. We are glad you are here with us. I think I'm more tired today than I was last week after a full day of, or a full week of being back to normal. So um, we are glad you are here with us. Um, in your bulletins, there's a list of things that are going on. Um, following service today is our annual uh, church meeting. Um, so we would appreciate it if you'd like to stick around and hear about what's going on and where we're headed, uh, possibly in the future. Uh, I know youth group starts tonight, um, which we're excited about. Uh, Bible study is continuing. And then uh, the only other thing I have, two things, sorry, about missing them. I'll get in trouble if I don't say them. Men's breakfast, um, we're, we're continuing to meet as a group of men. And uh, we've, we've kind of fallen into Moz, and we, we like Moz, so that's where we're probably going to stick for a while. So if you want to join us, it's the first Saturday of every month, um, unless things change and we get the word out. And uh, we'll, we'll leave here at 8 o'clock and head down there and just have a good time of fellowship and, and hanging out. Now, you know that on this coming 6th, when we have a schedule, he's close because he was going to Mexico, remember? Oh, we're going to figure something out then. Yeah. Yes. Nope, didn't know that. I forgot about that. Thanks for reminding me. So, it's not going to be at Moz next month, so we'll figure something out. We're cooking here. Um, Terry's cooking here, he said, so um, that's, that's what we'll do then. And then uh, Sisterhood uh, is going to start back up again. Uh, all ladies of the church are invited. Uh, it's on the 7th of February, so it is uh, Sunday, correct? Uh, that is, I don't have my phone with me, because if the 6th is a Saturday, then the 7th would be a Sunday. Usually, yeah. Deductive thinking, right? So... Um, other than that, that's all I have. Are there any announcements that I have missed? Um, Tolan's got to come up and do our uh, annual meeting stuff. Uh, but I want to pray, and then uh, we'll get going. Got to just come again to thank you for another Sunday, another time that we as the, the body can get together and worship, Lord. Father, we thank you for this wonderful building that we have to, to meet where it's warm. And But, Father, we, the people, are the church. And so, Father, I pray that we would continue to be that uh, for people in this community and beyond. Lord, help us to continue to point people to you no matter where we're at, what we do, Lord, whether we're in the field or in an office, uh, Lord, or in school. I pray that you'd help us to, to point people to you with our life and with our words. And Father, we just thank you again for the place that we have to come to, to worship, to encourage, to love each other, to, to lift each other up, Lord, to meet at your table and to speak with you. Father, I thank you, Father, that we have this avenue as your body to, to come and be refreshed and, and be renewed. So, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we pray that you'd be with us now, and we thank you so much for, for coming and, and dying on a cross for us and resurrecting, Lord. We thank you so much for um, the relationship we can have with you because of that. Father, so we say thank you. Lord, we pray that you'd be with us now, help us continue in our worship. It's in Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen. All right, the last time I have to read these for this year. Um, again, this is the recommended officers uh, for 2021 um, that will be voted upon at our annual meeting um, this afternoon. Uh, for recording secretary, Tammy Havrilla, Chris Honrud, assistant, general fund treasurer, Tanya Allen, Terry Allen, assistant, Mission Fund Treasurer, Carly Bayou, Jay Worrell Assistant. Youth Fund Treasurer, Jen Allen, Roxy Allen Assistant. Bible School Superintendent, Rita Sheely, Jen Allen Assistant. Building Fund Treasurer, Mary Hanford, <coughs> Tanya Allen Assistant. Financial Secretaries, Ron Bailey, Mary Hanford, Tammy Averla, Ron Robinson, Sue Robinson, Diane Jones. And then we have two trustees up for election this year, uh, Bill Sheely and Rick Hollywood. Thank you. Let us sing. 
Friede.
that time where we want to be praying for one another, and so how can we be praying for you, or with you, or side with you? Say his name again. Mile Fats. Mile Fats. So I thought you said, I just didn't want to. Um, I know uh, Don Swenson Guard passed away, um, Renee Anderson's brother. So be with that family as well. Swenson Guard, what I say? Thanks. Wins guard. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Um, Mary and her own son, Ruben, where she's staying now, they went ahead and had her get her shot when they got theirs. And well, her and Ruben came back and been very scary. So Ruben gave up said he was too cancer. Mary and her son Reuben are really sick from the vaccine. So. Any others? Any others? Um, my dad's not going to be here for a while. Um, his leg that he has problems with is split open again. So last, it, it took him six months to heal last time. So I'm just praying for a, a quicker recovery. Um, so I would appreciate if you pray for him. And then my mom, um, she's she just not doing real well with her cancer treatments. It knocks like this. This one's had her down for four days now, so um, she's not doing so well. Um, so I would appreciate it if you'd pray for her as well. So. Any others? All right, pray with me. Lord God and Heavenly Father, again, I just come to you to thank you for this time that we have as a family to come together to bear each other's burdens and lift each other up, Lord. And Father, we want to say thank you for Sue's uh, successful surgery, Lord. But as she heals, I pray that you'd help her to be pain-free and to, to get back to health, Lord. Father, I pray for the Fats family. Um, Lord, I just ask that you would... Uh, Comfort them in their grief and the Swinsgard family as well, Lord, as, as they mourn the passing of Dawn. And Lord, I just pray for those families that lose loved ones. Um, it's, it's hard to, to lose people that we care about. So, Lord, I ask that you would put people in their lives that are going to comfort them and, and just sit with them and, and, and Lord, help them in their, in their grief, Lord. Father, I pray for Mary and uh, Reuben as well, uh, Lord, as they are fighting some sickness, Lord. Maybe they didn't react well. I don't know, Lord, but whatever it is, I, Father, I pray that you would just be with them, help them to recover and to get well. Father, we're thankful to hear about that, that lady that Tanya saw at the grocery store. and Father, that she's receiving her first round of vaccine, Lord, and I, I pray that you would help keep her healthy. And Lord, the prayer is the same as, Lord, just open it up so that way people feel feel like they can come back, Lord, and be around groups of people again and be around families and be around 
their church family, Lord, I just ask that you would help them to um, be able to get to that point, Father. Um, Lord, I ask that you be with my, both my parents as they're, they're dealing with different things and different ailments and um, as they would heal and as, Father, as they would be able to get over their sickness from their, their treatments, Lord, that they're receiving. So, Father, I ask that you would just comfort those that, that are not here. Father, I pray that you would be with those that are at home still. Um, this has been a long, long time period for people to be away from their, their church family, Lord. So I ask that you would continue to be with them. Father, I ask that you continue to comfort them and know that they're not forgotten. We think about them all the time and ask that they would um, just continue to do what they, they think is necessary for them, Lord, and, until the time is right. You know, um, Father, you, you heal our land. And so, Father, that's what we pray, that you would forgive our sins and heal our land. Lord, we do thank you again for this, this place that we have to come together as, as a family and to worship. Lord, we thank you for all that you do in our lives. Thank you for the resurrection and the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
communion time this morning, I have chosen a devotion entitled Time to Recharge the Batteries by Nancy Karpensky. Have you ever suddenly been awakened in the middle of the night? You lay in bed wondering what woke you. About 30 seconds later, you have almost fallen back to sleep when it happens again. Your smoke alarm emits that tiny chirping sound. Oh, it's not detecting smoke. That noise is loud and blaring. Instead, the annoying little chirp is warning you that the battery is losing its power. Wouldn't it be great if your spiritual life gave you a little warning chirp when your spiritual batteries are losing power? Wouldn't it be great if you could just... If, wouldn't it be great if you could be just as sensitive to the whispers of the Holy Spirit as your ears are to that little chirp from the smoke detector? One important resource for recharging your spiritual batteries is this weekly appointment at the Lord's table. The communion meal is a time and a way to renew your spiritual strength. The bread and the juice are not packed with vitamins like an energy bar or a power drink. Although the meal is made of the simplest foods, they are costly. Jesus, is sac Jesus sacrificed his life so that you can eat this meal with him. The recharging and renewing comes not from what you are eating, but from the one who comes to the meal with you. Picture yourself sitting across the table from Jesus. He provides the meal. He is pleased to join you. When you are face to face with him, you are reminded of the great exchange, his purity for your sins, his strength for your weakness, and his peace for your turmoil. He is able to keep you from, from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. That is enough to recharge you for another week. As you eat and drink, savor his presence. Rejoice that he sees you as faultless. May your time with him today recharge you. May you be filled with joy as you realize that he, invite, he invited you, he prepared for you, and he welcomes you to join him. Shall we have a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come into your house again this day. We thank you for the things that we have been able to enjoy this morning for the Sunday school class where we could discuss your word and you could teach us what it is that you would have us to learn from your scriptures. Lord, we thank you that we can come and we can sing praises to you out of thankfulness for everything you have done for us. Now as we come to this time when we partake of these emblems, the fruit of the vine which represents the blood that you shed on the cross, and the loaf which represents the body that hung there as an atonement for the sins of the world. We just pray that we might examine ourselves, that we might see that you hung there on that cross out of love for us. We know that you did it willingly, that we might have a chance of everlasting life with you. 
Help us also to remember that you did not stay in the grave, that on the third day you arose. And you have promised us that if we follow you, <coughs> that we too can rise from the grave and have everlasting life with you in heaven. So as we partake of these emblems, we just pray that we might remember you on that cross. Remember the great love and the great sacrifice that you made for each of us. Help us remember also that great promise that you gave us, that promise of eternal life. So I just pray that you would be with each of us as we partake this morning. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. There are emblems at the front and the back if you'd like to partake. Oh, good morning again. Good we are morning. back in the saddle of things, and for me. And um, last week, you know, we I, I I've written this series. Well, I wrote sermon number one like three weeks before I left, and so I've been working on number two for a while. And uh, here we are, at number two. Um, we're looking at, at the church at Colossae. Um, they were a unique church because. It was, a, it was a church that the Apostle Paul never went to. And he had heard about their ministry and what they had been doing. And so I found this rather intriguing as I'm as I studying it and, uh, and trying to figure out what made them different, why they do what they do, um, why they were living as Christians in a very non-Christian world when, yeah, they had, they had a missionary that came by. I know Timothy visited them, and then the guy that was there, I can't remember his name, it was really weird. Um, but they had, they had the, the constant dealing with, with somebody who ministered to them, okay? But, you know, there, there was four different areas that, I, that I, we're going to be looking at is, is kind of what, how they're living as Christians in a non-Christian world. Last week, we looked at how to please God. 
you know, the, the things that we need to do. And what we discovered is they, they, what they were doing is they were loving people and they were, they were helping them in every way. They were spreading the gospel, it seemed like, at every turn. They were living lives worthy of the Lord by bearing fruit in every good work. They were expanding their knowledge of God, and in the face of persecution, they were having patience and, and endurance. And they were accomplishing all this because they, they knew that they had been set free by Jesus. It didn't matter what came at them. They were set free because of Jesus. So this week, I want to continue on it and see, see how they continue to live in this because they're, they're winning the war of the mind, okay? And, th and that's one of the things that you and I have to remember is that, you know, we can live in the world, but it's important that we don't live of the world. We don't think like the world. We don't think the ways that everyone else does. And we have to be, be able to win this war on the, of our minds versus the world, okay? We have to think like a Christian, that's what today's sermon is entitled for all of you, is Think Like a Christian. And we're going to look at the areas of, of our lives, not just on Sundays. All areas, not just on Sundays. Because, yeah, we come here and we, we kind of get honed in and focused. But we have to be mindful of the things that draw us away in our, in our personal lives, in our business lives, in our social lives. We have to be mindful of those things, okay? And one of the things that, that we got to remember is we... we can't let ourselves be deceived. We can't think that, oh, the world and its ways are looking pretty good, okay? And, and you know, Jesus has told us before is that we have to put our mind on things above, not on, not on earthly things. We have to allow Jesus to transform us, our ways and our patterns, okay? These are all things that we, we might have heard through the years from, from different preachers or different teachers or different Sunday school classes or wherever you might have heard it. But that's important for us. We have to begin to think like a Christian or, or think like a Christian seven days a week, 24 seven. Well, I guess you sleep some of that. Um, you don't have any control over that. But we have to be able to, to think like a Christian in all parts of our lives, okay? And we're going to look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 15, if you have your Bibles and you want to flip there and follow along as we read it. Um, but before we dive into it, let, let's pray over this scripture and uh, today's message. God, I just come to you to thank you again for this opportunity to be here, Lord, to speak what you've laid on my heart. Father, as always, move me out of the way. May you speak to our hearts and our minds to what you would have to tell us today. Use me as an instrument to communicate your word, uh, Father, and, and help us to learn from your ways. Help us to learn from this church at Colossae, how they, how they think and how they don't allow themselves to be deceived, Lord. I pray that you'd help us to begin to think that way as well. Lord, we, we do a lot of the times, and I pray that you continue to help us to do that, Lord. Help to, help to encourage us, help us to um, learn from your ways. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 15, here's what Paul wrote to the church at Colossae. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of deity lives, lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised in the putting off the sinful nature, not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful uh, nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and the authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. So we're going to look at, look at four things today um, that help us better understand how the Christians at Colossae thought like a Christian. And how we can too. Okay. So number one, from verse 8, don't get duped. Okay. Look at what it said. See to it that no one takes you captive. Through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. 
Can I tell you that culture is running rampant with non-Christian ideas and philosophies now more than ever? And it's only going to keep getting worse. The ideologies that are being put out there run completely counter to what the Bible is telling us. Think about it. What kind of access do we have to things that draw us away from Christ? Pornography is still running rampant in our culture. Social media controls our thoughts and our information. We literally are addicted to our screens. Okay? There are apps that allow you to be, be graphic with people without any trace of it. TV shows are allowing a whole lot more than when I was a kid. Movies have begun to show more and more graphic content. A PG-13 now is, is like an NC-17 when I was a teenager, okay? It is very graphic to watch movies that are being made today. And this seems to be the normal way of thinking, does it not? Think about the assault the world and its ways are having when it comes to our children. Everything from video games to social media driven happiness. Kids shows that deal with intense sexualized relationships. If you have young kids or grandkids, it's important to monitor what they watch. Last Sunday, just last Sunday, I was, I was sitting in the, in, in the kitchen area and Lily was watching her program on the TV. And they were talking about openly homosexual relationships. And I was like, what are you watching? And I went out there and made sure I rewound and make sure I was hearing what I was hearing. And sure enough, it's a TV show about a band. And they were a little girl band. And they were talking about this homosexual culture, normalizing homosexual culture. So I told Lily, I said, sorry, honey, you can't watch that. That is off, off the thing. But our kids are being assaulted at every corner. And, 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 and because it's aimed at our children, we get involved in that as well. We sometimes fall into that path as well. You see, we're being told that none, nothing is bad. Nothing is bad. You see, this is that hollow and deceptive philosophy that, that Paul was warning the church about. Things haven't changed, folks. From, from thousands of years ago, they haven't changed. The hollow and deceptive philosophies are still assaulting us, still assaulting the church. The world and its ways continue to push the envelope on morality, spirituality, truth, and in doing so, they're pushing Christ to the wayside. You see, the hollow and deceptive philosophies depends upon us pushing Christ to the side. Did you catch it where Paul told them? Look at the, look at the words. Rather than Christ. You see, that, that, that part where he says, the rather than Christ, the, the, depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. It, re, it requires us to, to begin to, to align ourselves with the world and agree with the world in its ways and everything that, that it's being pushed upon us rather than Christ. Now, listen, folks, I'm not saying that, that we put our heads in the sand. I, I'm most certainly not advocating that at all. I'm not, I'm not saying that we should stop living our lives. Remember, the Christians at Colossae remained faithful, and they were spreading the gospel in and amongst all of this. So what makes them different? How did they do it? The problem for, for them is when they began to justify their lives to suit what they would do because everyone else was doing it. Have you heard that before? That, that, that we begin to uh, adjust what we think and what we do to suit our lives? We begin to push Christ out rather than Christ. If we push Christ out and allow the world in, we're going to become captive as slaves to sin. And being ignorant or unknowing uh, of, of God's word is no longer an excuse we can use. You see, because we're educated. We have access to God's Word everywhere. It's literally on the Internet. If you don't have a Bible, tell me. I'll get you one if you want to read it in print form. But you can go on the, on the Internet and get it. If you don't have the Internet, I'll, I'll buy you a Bible. We no longer have an excuse. 
especially here in the United States, we have no excuse to say, oh, I don't know what God's Word says about that. I'm not saying that you don't study it and you don't read it and, and then you sometimes forget it. I do that, okay? I'm like, where was that scripture at? But I'm thinking about it, okay? But, but to be ignorant of it and go, I just don't know what God's Word says. It's not an excuse anymore, folks. Listen to what Romans 12, 2 says. It says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we renew our minds? Right here. It says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We'll know what his word says. We'll know what he wants for our lives. We'll know, we'll know what we, we can do. See, we can't fall for the tricks that our enemy, the devil, wants to pull on us. We've got to stay focused, folks, and we can't be duped by the, the hollow and deceptive philosophies any longer. We can't. It's easier for the, the Christians of Colossae to be duped. So they didn't have access to God's written word. But yet they were living as Christians in a very non-Christian world. And, and Paul was reminding them to don't fall for the tricks of the devil. Focus on Christ. Number two, verses 9 and 10. Look to Christ. <coughs> Let's look at that. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. Come on, folks, we know the gospel story, right? Christ came to earth as a baby. God put on flesh to be like us, to know our firsthand struggles, what we face in the world. He's done it. And when we become a Christian, you know what we do? We, the Bible tells us that we put on Christ. Fullness in deity. We've been brought into that same fullness. Christ became... Fully God in the flesh. And we become just as Christ when we become a Christian. And Jesus gives us the charge that we are on the same earthly authority as him. Matthew 10, 24 tells us, The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. We all can preach the gospel. And if you don't think you can, I would challenge you on that. You can tell someone about Jesus and your relationships, the, your relationship with Jesus. We can all do these things through Christ. We have that, that same power and authority because of Christ. He is the head over every power and authority. And we've got the power. We no longer have to succumb to the worldly things. You see, we no longer have to say, you know what, I can't do it. I don't have the strength. Yeah, you don't have the strength. But as a Christian, guess what? You have Christ's strength inside of you. You have Christ's strength holding you up. You have Christ's strength lifting you to the point that you can withstand it. We don't have to, to fall to the world's ways. You see, we can focus on Christ and, and, and let him be the light at the end of your tunnel, so to say. You see, we're given an opportunity as a Christian to live for him in every aspect of our lives. And we have to do it here. We have to, we have to turn our minds to the things of Christ rather than to the things of this world. Number three, we have to realize something. We have to realize that we are a new creation. We're no longer our old self. In verses 11 and 14, he outlines that. He says, look, in him you were also circumcised and putting off the sinful nature, not with a circumcision done by the hands of men, but with a circumcision done by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us our sins. Folks, we are a new creation. We see that all over the place. Paul tells the churches that, that he visited and that he wrote letters to that are in our Bible, in, in the church of Corinth, the church of Galatians. You see, he tells them, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. I have been crucified with Christ, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. 
And I can go on and on and on from the apostles teaching about this. They no longer wanted to do the things of this world. You see, that's one of the things we have to remember, folks. It starts here in our minds. We have to remember that Jesus paid the price. Remember what he cried out from the cross? It is finished. The debt of sin is paid. It is no longer ours to worry about. Christ calls us to life. He calls us to that new life. He calls us to live like we have a new lease on life. Like you, you've, you've woken up out of, a, out of a coma after two years. You have a new lease on life. Like you've defeated cancer. Like you want to live your life as much as that. What if we begin doing that with Christ? What if we said, you know what? Christ has set me free. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. There isn't anything in this world that can take that away. Except when we think about what? All the legal ramifications of what Scripture says. And, and we don't think we're good enough. And, and we begin to bury ourselves in, in doubt and sin and shame. And Christ set us free. He said, it is paid. And if we're a baptized Christian and you were raised to a new life, we've died to our old self. We're buried and we're raised to that new life. That's what baptism means. And this is what Christ calls us to do. We receive that new lease on life, the forgiveness of our sin, and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We no longer have to live with guilt and shame of sin because it's been forgiven, it's been washed away. We're no longer bound by that legal circumcision that Paul is talking about here. Our hearts have been circumcised. So folks, live like a new creation and be different from the world's ways. Remember what Jesus said about the world and the enemy, the devil. He said in John 10, 10, he says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. He's given us a new lease on life. We are a new creation in Christ. And that leads me to my last point. Being that we are a new creation and living a life for Christ and thinking like a Christian and, and we're not falling for the world's ways. Guess what, folks? We have a, a victory at the end. Look at verse 15. It says, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Folks, Satan has no power over a Christ follower. None. Zilch. Zero. James tells us that, that we, when we are tempted and drug away and enticed by our own sin, when we walk away from Jesus is when we fall prey to the devil. I love the way he wrote this here. Disarm the powers and the authorities and he didn't just disarm them. He, he made a public spectacle of them. I love well, the way Paul wrote that. He made a public spectacle, spectacle of the devil in his ways. He said, look, I made a fool out of him. He has no power or authority in my <coughs> kingdom. And folks, if you're a Christian, we live in that kingdom. We live in that realm. We live in that authority. Christ came and, he, and, he, and he's lived and he showed us a life and he, and he nailed our sins to the cross. He paid the penalty that was meant for us. He resurrected to defeat Satan. Sin and death were defeated at the cross. Christ reigns victorious. And that's what he did through the cross. He defeated Satan. And the power, that the, the little glimpse of power he thought he had. It is no longer bound in that. We are no longer bound by that. We're set free. You see, Paul wants the Christians at Colossae to see this in order to keep going. Because I'm sure that they struggle just like you and I do. And we need to see that we have to keep going in order that, that we understand how to think. We call ourselves Christians because we believe in the gospel. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have confessed Christ. 
We've repented of our sin and have been baptized. We are a Christ follower. The encouragement is to keep going, to keep it up. Remember what he has done for you. Don't fall for the tricks. Hold on to the teachings that you know come from him. Don't get tricked into believing something else. When things get tough, remember, Christ is the one who makes us full. As a Christ follower, we're called to be different. And we live in a victory zone. We live in an end zone, folks, where we scored the game-winning touchdown, okay? We're celebrating all the time. And that's what Christ has done for us. And we have to remember to think like that. We can't just always let the world beat us up and be down and wore out. It's going to happen. I know it is. But we have to remember who is the victor through all of it. Will you pray with me? God, I just come to you to thank you again for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to preach, Lord. I thank you for the end zone dance that we get to have. Father, that, that we can live as a new creation in you. That we no longer have to worry about sin and shame and, and doubt where we're going or what we're doing. Father, you paid that on the cross. Father, I pray that you'd help us to think like that, to remember what you've done for us. That we wouldn't trap ourselves or we wouldn't allow the devil to trap us or pull us away by temptation. Father, we all sin and fall short of your glory, but we're thankful for the glory that we have in Christ. Help us to remember that. Help us to remember those things that, that we sometimes forget because we allow the devil to creep in a little bit and cast that doubt. Lord, help me to remember that as well. Help me to, to live for you in all, everything that I do. Help me to live my life full because of you. Lord, as always, help us all to be able to point people to you, to tell them about the freedom that is in you. Lord, we love you and we thank you for what you do for us. It's in Jesus' precious holy name that I do pray. Amen. Music team's coming forward and, and you know, that's what we're thinking about. If, you, if you're sitting there going, man, I don't feel that free, kid. I've never given my life to Christ. Maybe today's the day. Maybe you feel called to, to give your life completely and 100% to Christ. And if you do, come talk to me. We're going to stand and we're going to sing. And there will be a, a short time that if you want to talk today, we can. If you want to talk tomorrow, we can do that too. But we're going to stand and we're going to sing. And... Um, Think about those things. to go out and to, to don't get tricked by the world and its ways. 
Try to focus in on the Bible. Read, read scripture every day, even if it's just for five minutes. Find some time to spend with the Lord and to, to triumph over that evil through the help of Christ. Let's pray. God, I just come to you again to thank you for this opportunity. Lord, thank you for uh, the ability to come to this place and to worship as a family. Lord, we thank you that um, we have been set free by Christ. Help us to go out and to live like that. It's in Jesus' precious holy name that I pray. Amen. If you're sticking around for the annual meeting, find a spot and sit down and we'll, we'll mic up or something because we want to stay spread out a little bit. So have a great week, everyone. What are you doing?